Hey guys, Stefan here from Tech Testers, and today we'll be taking a look at Metro Exodus. We'll look at its RTX support, what kind of performance you can expect from most graphics cards, some differences between Intel and AMD CPUs, and generally just ramble a bit about some of the things we came across while playing and testing the game. Now, for those of you only interested in certain aspects, for example the test results, I'll put the timestamps in the description. This video is brought to you by the Aorus AD27QD, Gigabyte's first gaming monitor that earned our top recommendation if you're looking for a fast, solid performing 27 inch Quad HD monitor for gaming and creative tasks. Get yours using the link in the description below. Metro Exodus is the third Metro game following Metro 2033 and Last Light, and its best class is a single player survival horror stealth shooter thing. And I won't be reviewing the game itself today much, and I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but I did get to play it for several hours over the last few days. and. There's a couple of thoughts I have about it that I do want to share. A uh, super short summary would be that anyone who's a fan of the genre should really consider getting this game, especially with so many games focusing on multiplayer modes and battle royales these days. I think it's really nice that the developer is taking the more traditional approach of just offering a nice, fairly scripted story. After mostly playing Call of Duty and Battlefield lately, it's definitely a breath of fresh air and a change of pace. Let's get some criticism out of the way first, and it's a bit subjective as well, because personally I do favor good gunplay over mother most other aspects of games, and the gunplay isn't something that Metro is particularly good at. I also want to temper some expectations that some people are already making these Game of the Year claims already. Of. The voice acting and storytelling isn't in the same league as God of War, Witcher 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, for example. Now, don't get me wrong, I still say it feels like a very good game, I just don't want you to start it expecting the very best game ever. If you're a fan of excitement, especially if you're a bit jumpy like myself, there's plenty of fun to be had and it does a really good job of keeping you on your toes. That's also very good looking and atmospheric, it does take a bit to get started, but after the first few hours it does a fantastic job at presenting you a gloomy, post-apocalyptic world. Now, ammo is scarce and there's plenty of things to consider just to survive in the world. Now, the story is fairly linear, but there is plenty of ways you can go about to finish your mission. Now, after the first hour or so, Nada and myself both literally said the same thing. It kind of feels like what well, the latest Fallout game should have been, or a new Stalker game. As often, it's more open than the old Metro games, and I do really mean it as a compliment. If those are the games you like, then this is definitely one you should play. Anyway, let's get on to how the game looks and how it performs, and let's start with the elephant in the room, which is ray tracing. Now, Metro is after Battlefield 5, the second game to add RTX or DXR support, and it does so very differently. So in Battlefield 5 it's all about those reflections, and in Metro it's all about tracing those light rays coming from the sky. Also, pretty much only coming from the sky. Do you remember those fantastic Shadow of the Tomb Raider RTX demos where all the light sources created these fantastic natural shadows? Yeah, well you get exactly none of that here. Now, NVIDIA and 4A made some mention of this selective ray tracing being done not to complicate the nature of Metro being largely a stealth game and feeling familiar to stealth game players. And even though we all know that overall performance has definitely something to do with this choice, in fairness they do have a point here as well. Playing the game myself with RTX on made me realize that we as gamers need to get used to this new way of lighting scenes. We're so used to seeing games in a particular non-RTX way, with most surfaces being lit unnaturally in a way that doesn't actually make any sense, that when playing through the game with RTX on, many surfaces now look naturally, or actually are lit naturally very little, and it doesn't just make the game look more realistic in some scenes, it also makes supposedly dark areas suddenly damn hard to see in. Now that adds to the realism, but it also makes the game actually harder. Now indoor scenes specifically, with the light coming in from the outside, is where RTX really shines, as the end result is a usually a moodier, darker room rather than an unnaturally lit one. And in those scenes, Metro really does look stunning. Turning RTX off is suddenly like turning on one of those contrast enhancing features that you want to use to in multiplayer shooters to improve visibility at the expense of atmosphere. Now in Metro, more so than in Battlefield, I do feel like being able to turn RTX on is a good thing, as mood is everything in the survival game, especially if it's a bit slower paced. Now would I have missed it? Probably not, and also admit that I'm a bit disappointed that local light sources are not ray traced, as this would have really improved the overall level of realism even more. That's a good reminder that in 2019 we're looking at ray tracing assistance rather than a fully ray traced image. And there's plenty of ways that it could be improved, like more light sources being traced indoors would have made a huge difference, especially in tunnels for example, where currently ray tracing basically adds nothing. So right now ray tracing is mostly limited to scenes that combine darker areas, like a house or a train, with the sky being able to shine in or bounce off light. Now the bottom line however is that playing this game without a doubt I do prefer ray tracing being on rather than off, and that is a small much needed step for Nvidia. Or should I say two steps forward one step back, because as we turn our attention to elephant number two, DLSS, it does become a bit more complicated. Now when I looked at our DLSS on and off screenshot it was kind of hard to explain what parts really bothered me about it, but both 
both Nara and I, we turned off DLSS within the first minutes of playing as the overall image just feels a lot less crisp. Now playing through the game with DLSS on, it just felt like we're playing on 1080p on a 1440p monitor and that's just not what DLSS is supposed to feel like. And I don't want to judge it too harshly yet as it requires deep learning and maybe there's just a lot of learning left to be done, but right now it's just not good enough. Now onto the first test results. So we tested 14 graphics cards, 15 if you count the GTX 1050 Ti that kind of gets destroyed at anything other than 1080p medium and threw them at our Intel Core i9-9900K. Now Metro does come with a built-in benchmark which is surprisingly consistent as well as pretty to look at but there is a huge gap between benchmark FPS and actual game FPS. At best it's a really nice showcase at making the engine look really good and it does offer a decent synthetic comparison between different graphics cards as well as show the difference between AMD and Nvidia. So for that purpose we'll go through the benchmark results here but don't lose hope yet if these numbers make you fear that you won't be able to play the game. Now no real surprises in the AMD vs Nvidia battle with the GTX 1060 and the RX 580 being close-ish and the same goes for the Vegas versus the GTX 1080. Now similarly as expected we see the GTX 1080 Ti being close to the RTX 2080 and mostly it's just nice to see that even though there's ray tracing and DLSS support it's not a game where AMD owners have to worry about poor optimizations. Now translating these results into actual game FPS is fairly difficult as there's serious differences in frame rates depending on the scene and the zone you're playing in and the settings you're on. Now benchmarking one particular scene over and over again wouldn't really give you a fair idea of what to expect either. Now you might even find some reviews with benchmark scores being about twice as high as the one from the built-in benchmark and in some scenes and settings that's definitely the case but it's not really a proper representation of your experience experience either. So the only thing we could do is pick a couple of cards and actually play with it through different scenes. From that we concluded that the results of the in-game benchmarks are actually more in the vicinity of the 0.1% lows FPS from the actual gameplay. Now without RTX you can easily add 50% of the actual gameplay FPS and with RTX on that's still 30 to 4 percent higher. That meant that on our RTX 2080, 1440p Ultra RTX on we would average about 65 FPS over the course of a few hours which is a lot better than the 47 from the benchmark would suggest. So after playing with several of these cards at the resolutions we'd actually expect you to use on, we were able to get a rough idea of what settings you can expect with each of these graphics cards. Now considering the, the style and the not that fast pace of the game, we felt that 60 plus FPS on average would be fine, accepting some scenes dropping into the 50s, which is still a very pleasant experience playing this. Now for Full HD medium settings, you'll be good with something like an RX 570 or RX 580 or something like a GTX 1060. Now if you're looking at keeping Ultra up at Full HD, AMD fans should really bring in Vega and Nvidia fans should bring in GTX 1070 or RTX 2060 or faster. At 1440p or Quad HD it does become tougher quickly with the RX 580, 590 and even the GTX 1066G just about pulling medium comfortably. At Ultra specifically it becomes a struggle for AMG in general where only an overclocked Vega 64 is just about comfortable. Same goes for Nvidia however with the GTX 1080 being in roughly in the same spot. It's mostly smooth but there's the occasional frame drop here and there. Again it's not a light game. Realistically, for 1440p Ultra, you want a 1080 Ti, a factory OC, RTX 2070, or faster. Now, Metro Exodus on 4K, that is basically RTX 2080 Ti territory, with the 1080 Ti and the RTX 2080 just about managing to keep it playable in medium, but it's the RTX 2080 Ti that's the bare minimum for higher settings on 4K. Now, just to highlight the RTX performance separately again, now for 1080p Ultra and RTX, the RTX 2060 does hold up for most scenes, but it is tight in others, and I will say it's RTX 2070 territory mostly. Now, overclocks are definitely welcome here. Now, at 1440p, you'll need an RTX 2080 to comfortably run Ultra and RTX. Now as far as 4K goes, really don't even think about it. It's a struggle even for the RTX 2080 Ti and maybe DLSS updates can push performance while not sacrificing image quality but it's simply not there yet. Now all in all it is a very heavy game for sure. It's definitely not as bad as the benchmarks make it seem but it's definitely one of the tougher games out there. Also I do have to say that in general the game looks pretty decent on medium as well so don't worry too much about not having the GPU for ultra settings. A good game does not need ultra settings to be experienced properly and this is definitely one of them. Having said that I do think it's great that high-end GPU owners out there really do get some nice eye candy because Metro definitely offers that as well. Heavy games like this also underline that it's a good thing that Nvidia GPU owners can now use the FreeSync functionality these days if you have a FreeSync monitor. Check the link in the description on how to enable that. Now another thing we wanted to test is how the performance varies depending on the CPU you use. Now we retested with an AMD Ryzen 7 2700X and these results are quite interesting as for example AMD GPUs perform basically the same with the Ryzen as on the higher clocked Intel one. However when using an Nvidia GPU we definitely see some differences with performance being higher when using the Core i9 at Full HD resolution specifically. Now at 1440p the difference becomes small and at 4K they're basically gone and honestly I don't think 
seeing this impact any of the choices we make and also no one really cares about full hd medium on a high-end gpu still it's interesting to learn how cpu impacts performance differently based on what brand of gpu you have now keep in mind again that what you're looking at now are the benchmark results not the gameplay ones and the gameplay ones are better but the cpu impact is similar for both so this makes it a little bit easier and honestly i'll admit that it's just a pain to translate the sheer amount of data from all those recording sessions into more graphs and i'll also admit that really all i want to do right now is get back to finishing the game because i really do like it now anyway that's it from us for today and a ton of testing does go into this so definitely let us know if you enjoyed it and you want us to do more of this also if you have any questions simply ask so give us a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to see more and until next time